Hi, I'm Mark from Solace, and I've been getting a lot of questions about async API and code generation lately, so I thought I'd record a quick video showing you how to use an async API specification along with code generators to generate a Spring Cloud Stream microservice. So let's check it out. I'm going to go ahead and, and log into my free developer account, and if I navigate um, under Event Portal to the designer, I can see that I have an Acme Rideshare application domain. And when I dig into this application domain, I've got my event-driven architecture here. I can go ahead and ungroup the events to get a more detailed view. Now, if you want to learn more about the event portal, um, go ahead and check out this link. Um, but this video is concentrating on async API code generation. So I'm going to go ahead and go straight to this expense integration application. So as a developer at Acme Rideshare, I've been asked to develop this expense integration uh, microservice. And so the expense integration microservice subscribes to the customer receipt generated event. And so I want to receive this event. And if I go check out, check out what this event looks like, I can actually see it's defined by a ride receipt schema. And if I expand the schema, I can see it's defined as a JSON schema. And so in here, it has a whole bunch of, of attributes such as request ID, subtotal, total charge, etc. And so this schema defines my event. So as a developer, I can of course um, custom create a application that handles an event with that payload, or I can go ahead using the portal, um, go to my expense integration application and choose async API and export an async API specification file or document that defines my app and do some code generation. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. So it generates the specification document and outputs it to a YAML file. So we can actually take a look in the YAML file here and we can see the schema that was generated by the ride receipt. We can see the customer receipt generated message is going to be received and on which channel it's going to be received. We also see information here about the title of the application I want to create, its description and version, etc. So now that I have a specification, I want to generate some code. So let's head over to the terminal. So you can see I'm in this temp video demo directory. It is indeed empty. And so what I want to do is generate the project using the async API generator. So the ag command means async API generator. I want to output to a video demo directory. Uh, I want to use the Solace binder since Solace is the event broker that I'm going to use. Um, it's got an extra P in there, so let me um, remove that. And then, so basically what I'm going to be generating here is a Spring Cloud Stream microservice. And so it is a, going to be a Maven project. So I'm actually here going to specify an artifact ID, um, which will go into my Maven palm, um, a group ID as well for Maven and then a Java package here to place my generated um, POJOs into. I then have some Solace information here. So I have parameters to set the host, the username, the password, and the message VPN that I want to use. Um, so the code generator will actually take my connection information and actually throw it into the config file for me. Um, I'm then in specifying the um, async API document that we just downloaded from the portal and then the template that I want to use um, to generate the application. So actually, let me jump over here real quick. Um, so this is the async API code generator template that we're going to use. So you can find it you know, in GitHub at this address. Um, you can also check out um, the async API homepage to find other um, code generators as well. So in here, you can walk through. You can see how it works. Um, you know, which methods are created, how the methods are named, um, how to use it, and all sorts of other parameters and extensions that you can use to do different things. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and run this command. And so it fetches the template and generates my code, which I can see is under temp video demo and then the video demo directory um, as we defined in our command here. So let's jump over to my IDE, which is just, I'm using Spring Tool Suite since I'm creating a, or well, generating a Spring Cloud Stream microservice, but you can use really any um, Java IDE to 
import a Maven project. So I'm going to go ahead and import a project, um, existing Maven projects um, from video demo, and that's our generated palm. So let me click finish there. So it's going to go ahead and import it into the IDE. We can see right away there's a little M on here which says it's a Maven project. And so what exactly got generated? So we have the Acme Rideshare expense package as we defined on the command line. And then here we have two things. We first have the ride receipt. So this is a POJO that was generated from the schema that was defined in the async API document. So this is awesome because it, you know, it sets all the fields um, that are in my schema and a bunch of setters and getters um, so I can access it in my code. So it's already saving the developer time from having to do that. The second class um, that's generated is application.java. So in here, it's actually a Spring Boot application because Spring Cloud Stream is based on both Spring Boot and Spring Integration. It's a Spring project that is meant to allow developers to easily create highly scalable event-driven microservices without having to learn messaging APIs. So we can see we have a generic Spring Bean here, um, and it's a consumer of a ride receipt um, event. And so in here now, it's just ready. We just need to add our business logic. Um, so if I go ahead and say we don't want to return null, but we want we want to return um, ride receipts. So let's take our ride receipt, and then we'll go ahead and say system dot out print line. <clears throat> ride receipt received. And then let's print out the ride receipt. All right, so obviously your business logic would probably be different and more complex, but at this point now we've coded up our function. And the last thing to check that was generated by the um, generator was the application.yaml. So essentially in here it configures the Spring Cloud Stream app um, by defining the functions that exist in it, the um, topic or channels that it listens on, um, and configures up the connection to your event broker um, to receive the events. So at this point, I can actually go ahead and run the application. Let me make this a little bit bigger. We should see that the application just starts up. So we can see it started. Um, it connected and started and voila, ride receipt received. So as, as the ride receipts come in, um, we can see that the application is already configured, connected to the broker, receiving and processing those events. So you can see how simple it is with async API um, and the code generator template to get started and get processing your events. Thanks for joining me. Hopefully that was useful and you learned how to generate a Spring Cloud Stream app using Async API and the code generators. Um, check out my blog to learn more. Um, this was obviously a sunny day scenario, but there are a few things um, to look out for. So check that out and I'll call those out for you. If you liked this content, um, please give uh, the video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to post it in the comments below or Ask it in our Solace community at solace.community. Thank you, and talk to you later.